start you off on what this SKM is. Hai kya ye? So SKM stands for simple Keynesian model. The other name for SKM is the Keynesian cross. All right. So the name is pretty obvious that this is a model by Keynes, right? Why he became famous in the Great Depression? Because Great Depression was a crisis time, right? So in the crisis time, classicals don't really have a separate solution that in a crisis time, this is what you should do to get out of the crisis faster. Classicals don't have a solution to that. Classicals say that if you let it be, if you don't do anything, in the long run, things will come back to full impairment. But the point is that you cannot wait for the long run. It's too long a period of time because if there is unemployment for a very long period of time, that means people are going to go hungry, people are going to go die, people are going to die, right? So waiting for the long run to come is not really a solution. And that's what Keen said that you can't wait for the long run. In the long run, we're all dead. So what you need to do, you need to have policies which work in the short run so that you can come out of the crisis faster. Right. So that is what he what he said. So Keynesian is a short run model. Now, another thing about the Keynesian thing, which is not there in the video I saw, is that somewhere classical is a supply side model. It says that ultimately full employment is at the full employment output, right? In, uh, is, is at the output in which all resource, all the inputs are fully employed, right? That's where in the long run, economy needs to be and if you need to improve your output in the long run you need to improve technology you need to improve capital or labor so it's a supply side model which says that to be able to increase output you need to concentrate on the supply side factors you need to increase supply it is a long run model so in the long run model this is true okay it's if you want to increase output in the long run you have to in improve either your technology or you have to improve your inputs. That's the only way to improve, up, increase output in the long run, right? But uh, Keynesian said, but what about the short run? In the short run, if uh, so let's take an example of the Great Depression. In the Great Depression, the scenario was that there is enough output, but what is the problem then? Output hai, production hai. What is the problem then? What was the problem in the Great Depression? What did he point out that ye problem hai? It was the lack of demand. There is a chair manufacturer. He's, he's manufacturing chairs, good quality chairs. But people don't want it. People don't think chairs are required. They have enough chairs. Okay. Why will this happen? This will happen because they don't have a good outlook for the future. For example, Corona time. What will happen in Corona time? There is no demand for goods. People don't want new things. People want to save their money. They don't want to spend it, right? We all have gone through Kanuna time. So it's very real. We know that that time you want to save. You don't want to spend on uh, things. You don't think that, you know, new restaurants are going to open. Uh, new facilities are going to open. People are going to invest in houses. People are going to do this. Nobody's going to do anything. So that time, what you have is deficient demand. So it is a demand deficient economy. And when there is a demand deficient economy, the focus by Keynes was on increasing demand. It wasn't on increasing supply. Okay, he said there is enough supply in the economy. What you have to do is to increase demand. Okay, so let's look at a diagram about of what did Keynes say about the economy, the overall economy that time. So he says that just like you do in micro, you have price and output, right? On the two axis. So here also we have price and output, but this is overall price level because this is macroeconomics. This is overall price level. And this is, this is the GDP. This is the total output. Okay. So he says that in this, just like micro, there are two curves. There is the aggregate demand curve and there is the aggregate supply curve. Okay. So both are, both are there. Now, he's saying that if you look at it, the aggregate supply curve in the short run or in the time of situations like depression, the aggregate supply curve, the aggregate supply curve is going to be horizontal. Why is that? Why do I have, what is the meaning of a horizontal aggregate supply curve? There is a situation of excess supply. 
if you are in a situation of deficient demand, then you are also in a situation of excess supply. Now in excess supply, what will happen? You don't need to increase prices to increase output. You are willing to sell your output at, the, at, at whatever minimum price. You don't need more price. You just need, you are willing to supply whatever people want at a fixed price. So usually we say that aggregate supply curve is upward sloping. If you want to, uh, to increase supply, you have to increase price. Why? Because uh, more expensive resources are being used to produce something. So that's why you, traditionally supply curve is upward sloping, but not in the short run. In the short run, during depression, supply curve is fixed. It is horizontal at a fixed price. So that's what Keynes said, that in times of depressions, prices are not variable. Prices are actually fixed. People, people are happy to supply at a particular price if there is any demand. Right? So Keynes talked about a horizontal aggregate supply curve. And he talked about a downward sloping aggregate demand curve. So he said that equilibrium in this model is completely demand determined. The point where demand meets supply is completely dependent on, what is it dependent on? The position of the AD curve. If the AD curve can be shifted outwards, and what is the AD curve? It's the demand. If the demand can be pushed outwards, Without any change in price, you will have a straight increase in income or GDP. Or if the demand falls, which is what he said happens in depressions, demands are falling. You will have without a fall in price also, you will have a fall in output. Corona time, demand fell for so many businesses shut, so many restaurants shut. So many businesses shut because no demand for their product. Nobody wants to buy that time. Right? So pessimistic times when people don't have a good outlook. He says that time demand is the problem. And if you can learn strategies to move this demand curve out, that is how you can move your economy out of this depression. Right? So this is a particular scenario which is fitting to this particular case of being in the short run, being where prices are fixed and being where supply curve is horizontal. All right. So his theory is based on this context. So in the SKM, in the simple Keynesian model, we learn what we learn is a simple way of increasing aggregate demand. Okay. We learn what are the components of aggregate demand? How do I even measure aggregate demand? What do I think aggregate demand is? What are, what are the components? How do I measure it? And once I know how do I measure it, then how do I increase it? And then the concept of multiplier, that if I want to increase my GDP by let's say 1%, how much do I need to increase demand by? So the relationship between demand and GDP comes through the multiplier. Okay, so this is pretty much the whole picture. So it's based on Keynesian macroeconomics. It's based on what is the what are the components of aggregate demand? Uh, how do how do how do they influence income? How can I increase aggregate demand? And how will that increase income? Okay. So the background is there is no discussion of supply. If you see in the Keynesian macroeconomics, if you see the video, there is no discussion of supply. The reason is this, because supply is assumed to be fixed and su supply is assumed to be there. Whatever can be demanded will be supplied at a fixed price. Okay, so if you can increase demand from, let's say this demand is 100 and this demand is 200. If you can increase demand from 100 to 200, then the supply will be there. You don't have to worry about supply. Just focus on increasing demand. How to increase demand? What influences demand? What can be done to change demand? That's all is it is there in SKM 
and ISLM and open economy. So all the three models are only about demand, right? Once we master demand, then we go to supply, which is ADAS, which is the fourth topic that we'll do. Okay, and then finally we'll do long run, which is the growth model. Okay, so that's how the whole picture will come about for, uh, for macroeconomics.